Arrests have been made, but that hasn't closed the emotional toll from the murder of a five-year-old Syracuse girl. Including that of Syracuse's police chief, who openly expressed feelings about what happened to Nefertiti Harris. Chief Joe Cecil joins us now. Chief, it seemed like you put a lot of thought into what you were going to say at that press conference a few weeks ago. What got you so emotional about this case of Nefertiti Harris? Well, I think it's some of the details that I knew at the time and still know to this day, but I was also trying to, you know, bring to the forefront all the work that was done on that case, you know, the patrol officers that originally got the missing person case, the homicide detectives that had to interview her siblings, her mother, the suspect, and of course the crime scene unit that had to, uh, you know, process that scene. Those officers and detectives were all feeling the same thing I was feeling, but I had the mic and I felt obligated to say something, not only to the family, but also to Nephi herself. So, Chief, I, I do have to ask you, I mean, how is everybody doing? Because, I mean, obviously you spent time, but your whole team, I mean, there were so many people that were out there. How's everybody doing? How do you recover from stuff like that? I don't know if you ever do recover, right. but we have our peer support team. We have, uh, that have reached out to them already. They've had numerous meetings, meaning everyone that's involved in, those, in that case could come and share their feelings. Mm -hmm. um, we have therapists out there for them and things like that, because I know we're police officers. We compartmentalize and we move forward and do the job, but this stuff takes its toll. You're humans. Yeah. Right. Yep, we're all uh, humans. Yep. Let's switch gears a little bit. We want to talk about stolen vehicles. Um, you know, it's been a huge problem in the city of Syracuse and Onondaga County. You've even teamed up with a dealership to give away free uh, steer steering wheel locks and also getting, you know, the uh, vehicles their right fix to try and prevent it. How's that going? But, it, you know, it seems like it still persists. And why is that? It's a great question, I guess, because the product for stealing is still there. Um. So we have teamed up with Matthews Hyundai. We have those steering wheel locks we're, we're giving out. We even have patrol officers now that are going uh, door to door uh, with when they spot a Hyundai or one of those chosen models in the neighborhood, stopping by the house and giving out one of those uh, steering wheel locks. Uh, we're going to be going to the neighborhood with or those technicians to start doing the upgrades. We're doing everything we can, but the product's still there and they're still being stolen. I believe our number as we sit here today is 80 percent higher than last year oh wow. so it, the problem is with who's stealing it because there's still no consequences right for the the kids the kids are stealing them yeah to some extent uh many of the children the kids the teens that stole them in the first wave are no longer the ones that are our target it's a whole nother group wow. that have decided to start doing it mm. but we have a lot of them identified we've made arrests uh, but yes, they, there's very little consequence. Um, Chief, we have noticed that um, some of these stolen cars end up in police pursuits. Um, has there been any rethinking of our policy of what we do when we identify a stolen vehicle, especially when often it is kids, many of them that are not even of legal age behind the wheel, now suddenly they see lights. Not to say that you've done anything wrong to this point, but is there any rethinking of that? Absolutely. We, yeah. No policy should ever be um, set in stone. It should always be fluid. Mm -hmm. And we just started talking about it again. Now keep in mind, we amended our pursuit policy um, about a year and a half ago to limit uh, when officers can can uh, start a pursuit. Oh. Uh, and we're looking at it again mm -hmm. because of all those reasons you just mentioned. Right, and so the prevention strategy heading into the neighborhood, that's yeah. Im imminent, right? Yeah, yeah. right. Yeah. Ha that's happening right now. What, yeah, what, uh, what should people look for and, and who's eligible to do that? I mean, you're taking your big mobile unit out into the neighborhoods, right? Yes. What we're doing is taking the mobile unit. We're going to have some, again, some uh, texts with us from Matthew Sande. Uh, we're going to identify, already we've identified the neighborhood that's mostly being affected. Mm -hmm. We'll be in that neighborhood. We're going to, you know, publicize it beforehand okay. so people can walk right up to this mobile command center with their vehicles. Not walk up, I guess drive up <laughs> right. with their vehicle and have it have that upgrade done. They can also receive one of those steering wheel locks for free. All right. right. I want to talk about the number of shootings in the city of Syracuse and shots fired calls significantly down what's what's happening well it's a array of things as i mentioned before um it's not only police work or really good police work going on there investigative work but also things on the other side you know community engagement and intervention and things like that the numbers are, are phenomenal right now i mean the biggest number the most clarion number to me is is 71 percent um down in uh, individuals who have been shot and injured or killed uh 71 percent and again it's, as I said before, it's not just a number. It's associated with an actual person. So what this accounts to uh, is 71% fewer families standing around either a hospital bed or a coffin. 
And, and a lot of people, including the media, have um, directly said, how are you going to fix this and stop this? I mean, it's not just one fix. It's several things you've always done, plus new programs. A couple of those things that, that stand out to you that you say, we've added this now to our arsenal. That really is, I don't know if it's preventing or we're catching and arresting and taking these people off the street or a combination. Yeah, so I guess the biggest one I would say that's new is the COPA curve. This is where we're asking officers when they have time, and with the 10-hour day, they do have some time on the, in their schedule to get out of the car for t three times a shift oh. for 20 minutes in a hotspot area that's either experiencing um, gun violence or some other crime, burglaries, larcenies, um, and get out of their car and walk up and down the street, engaging with neighbors, engaging with business owners. That's a huge move for us, and it's, it's proactive. It's preventative, uh, and not only that, but it engages the community. Mm. And it's, it's more than just their presence being in the neighborhood, though, right? It is. It's more than their presence because they're asking questions. They're talking with business owners, um, but um, and they're engaging with people. Mm. Excellent. Um, Chief, we want to know that the weather is getting a little bit nicer. Another hot topic for you guys has been um, dirt bikes, the ATVs. Um, you've started that uh, detail back up again. Um, what's the goal? We got to continue to uh, go after them? Yeah, the goal is to get more of them off the street. As you know, with the new ordinance that makes it very expensive to get one of those back, I don't believe anyone's tried to, to acquire their, their oh. you know, vehicle back. Mm -hmm. Not one time. So we're going to keep putting those details out keep taking them off the street, the illegal ones. Um, the newest thing we'll probably move to this year, uh, instead of using Air One, which is very expensive, um, we're probably gonna use drones to follow oh, the vehicles, wow. uh, to wait till they stop, wait till they're gassing up, wait till they're pulling in to their yard, and then we'll swoop in and grab them. But oh. drones are much cheaper, uh, they're very effective, mm -hmm. and we're gonna be starting to use them. Have your officers been trained on using the drones for this particular purpose? Not for this particular purpose, but we have multiple officers uh, uh, that are uh, expert in drones, and, and they've been used on multiple scenes, but not specifically oh, for so this. So this is new. It's new. Oh, yeah. wow. Is there, is there um, and correct me if I'm wrong, did the mayor in his proposed budget put some money in for your drone program, and is that part of the idea? It's or is part it just of the, general um, yep. use of drones more uh, uh, in police work? That so, you do? Yeah, so what's put in there, too, and here's a new one for you, too. Uh, what we're going to try to roll out this year uh, is a drone first responder mm. um, program. It's being done in other cities. When you have based, a disturbance, loud music, something that we don't know what we're going to uh, experience when we get there, so the officers can be more strategic when they arrive. The drone will actually respond to the scene and give us a firsthand over bird's eye view of what's going on there. In some cases, they'll actually respond to a scene and show us that it's over with. It's gone. There's nothing there, saving manpower from having to go there. So what kind of scenarios do you see that play now? I see scenarios where we need some strategic advantage, disturbances, fights, huh. maybe even gun violence, but also, uh, you know, quality of life things where maybe it's stayed in the system for a little while, we're not sure if it's still occurring, so we can, we can fly a drone over there and check it out. Car accidents, so we can see which way we need to approach a car accident determine if there's injuries. This drone can be a very, very valuable resource Especially for us. Especially with the officer safety, I would think. Sure, yeah. absolutely. Yeah, and, because and so many times yeah. you go into a situation you don't know, the officer has no idea the volatile situation where the drone could give you a sense of what the situation is prior to heading in. No doubt about it. And I can yeah. tell you just last week, this wasn't a drone, but it was one of our cops cameras. There was an SPO on that cops camera, a retired officer, spotted an individual with a gun, talking to two other individuals. Officers swooped in. Luckily, our officers are all young and in very good shape. The three people took off in opposite directions. Uh, officers caught all three of them. Wow. All three of them had illegal handguns. Wow. Were wow. Off the yeah. All Amazing. right. The drones are yep. here. There we go. Uh, Syracuse Police Chief Josie, so we always appreciate you coming in and, uh, and sharing a, a bunch of what uh, you guys are up to. We really appreciate it. Thank you, sir. Yeah, you're very welcome. Yeah. Thank, Thank you, Chief.